pastors, churches, church leaders do not really talk about. I'm not saying ever, but they just rarely do, if ever. And I, I, I think once or twice I've heard a couple uh, speak on somewhat of this level, but not nearly as much as I'm going to go into now. But it's about God's money, Creator's money, <laughs> nature's money, money with real wealth, real value, real wealth, and real use case. So we don't have that. We have this paper, paper, which has nothing back in it anymore. It's just, it's all it is. It's not even as useful as a blank sheet of paper or a tissue paper to blow your nose. This is just garbage. So if no one wants to accept it because it has no value, no one else will accept it, this is worthless. It's nothing. It's, it's, it's man's money, if you want to call it that. It's fiat currency. That's all it is. It's just garbage. Not un unlike, not like this, unlike this. This is a half ounce gold maple leaf uh, right now, currently at the value of it in fiat, in U.S. fiat, is about $1,200. might cost you a little more because of the markup. So this is a half ounce. That's gold. And I have here, I have, um, these are a couple one ounce rounds. This is silver. It's a buffalo. It's a back. And this is an Aztec. An Aztec. And they're just generic rounds, which means they, these are basically what, what the average going price is for silver plus a, a few dollar markup for the dealer so they can make money and make, make a living. So right now, today, like I said, that gold is about $1,400, right around there. Today, this would cost you, at a dealer, probably uh, $33, $34, maybe $35 at the most for one ounce. And right now, the rate's right, right under $31 an ounce for silver. So what's the difference between this and this, I explained it. This has real use case. This has real value. If no one wants to accept it for money, for barter, you can go elsewhere. You can go elsewhere around the world. You can go elsewhere around the country. It doesn't matter because this has real use case. This is silver. Silver is used in electronics. Silver is used in solar panels. Silver is used in vehicles, in computers, in automated autonomous vehicles. Silver is used everywhere. It's a great conductor. Same with gold, like you have there, that half ounce. Same with gold, this half ounce. This is used too, it has real use case. Besides just jewelry, it is, but it's just so expensive to use for electric, for whatever else the case is. Um, so that's why it's not used that much in industry, as much as silver is. But they both have real use case. If they're not accepted as a money, which they always will be all over the world, they're, they're going to be. There's no way they're not. They have that. They have real use case. They have real value to them. Unlike this paper, garbage, or the digits that they're trying to sell, trying to push off. CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, these invisible things that you don't see, you, it just, you go on your account and says you have so much in there, you have $100, and whatever you want to call it, in your, your checking account, in your savings account, in your account, $100, and that's what you have. So technically, it would be five of these. That would be $100, or they're taking this away. So now you don't even have the paper, this crappy paper. Now it's just digits. It's invisible. You have no power to it. This can be erased by the touch of a button, click of a button, click of a mouse, gone, evaporated. That's it. They have no value to them whatsoever. You don't see them. You can't touch them. You can't hold them. You can't feel them. They have no real, real case, like I've said. This, you can touch, feel, hold. This here is a one ounce silver. So like, like this Fiat paper, no matter how much it's wrinkled, no matter how much it's not, right now, right now, for now, not forever, but right now, people still accept this to purchase something for $20 or under that. No matter if it's wrinkled or tore or whatever, they'll still accept it. So it doesn't matter the value or the shape that it's in. Unlike 
um, if you have a numismatic, they call it, so people collect because they, they're pristine, they get graded, the gold, the silver, whatever, and they have a different date on them, that kind of stuff, then they have a higher value to them because people will pay that. That's not my realm. My realm of silver is silver is silver, gold is gold is gold, that's it. So no matter if that silver looks like this, like I just showed, or this, put them together, or this, this is still one ounce of silver. This still has the value of the melt. This I can still get currency for. This I can still exchange with. This I can still use because it still has real use and real value to it no matter what it looks like and how damaged it is, really. That's, that's a huge, huge difference. Um, so churches don't talk about this. Pastors don't talk about this. They don't. Congregations don't have any clue. Congregations don't have much of a clue because I'm, I'm guessing why the pastors don't have much of a clue is because of most society has been um, and is being kept indoctrinated, brainwashed from using real wealth, real, real money of real value, a real use case. God's money, if you want to call it that. The Creator's money. They don't use that. They don't, they don't, they don't see that has real value. They, it's outside of their realm of thinking because it's been taken out. It hasn't been taught. They haven't, they haven't learned it. They've learned the exact opposite. They've learned that this paper with ink on it that the central bank prints has real value and then pretty soon this is going away and then those digits that you go on the computer to look at, those have real value and they have no idea what this is, really. I mean, you tell them it's silver, but they have no idea the value of it and that kind of stuff. Just like if you go on YouTube, Mark Dice, you can look up, and he's offering people, he's offering people a, a silver bar, a bar of silver, or a, or a Hershey's chocolate bar, and everyone took the Hershey's chocolate bar. That's that's how indoctrinated and, and unaware people are. So I'm guessing it's the same way with pastors too, for the most part. And if some pastors do know and that kind of stuff, then the second tier of why this is not being talked about or told is because of 501c3. 501c3, look it up, just a hunch. 501c3, The Devil's Church, great book. I highly suggest it, you should check it out. But that that is no longer, the church, churches are not their own entity, they're not their own deal. They are, um, I guess they're talking or they're working for a master and the master is government. And that's the 501c3 chains. That's the handcuffs. So, the reason why it is, is irrelevant, really, you know this now, and other people know this, we need to go out there and we need to uh, make this known and expand it large and wide and yell us from the rooftops. Because if we can get pastors, we can get church leaders, we can get people that lead those churches, like I said, to start talking about this, to start teaching about this. Think of how many people go to church or watch pastors online or listens to pastors or know pastors. And if pastors are talking about this or church leaders are talking about this kind of stuff, then that congregation will become powerful. They'll know. And no matter how much the pastor knows, as long as that pastor or the leader's talking about some There'll be some people in the congregation, some people on the audience saying, hey, I'm going to look into this deeper. I'm going to find out more. And from there, they can learn a wealth of knowledge and learn where we were and where we are and how we have to make this right to live free and not under the, the thumb or the boot of the government, which it's just gotten worse and worse. But as of now, pastors, leaders of churches, that I've heard mainly talk about, well, we need, we need money here. We need funds for our church. We need this and that. And then you need to save your fiat. You need to be invested in stocks and bonds, mutual funds, your 401k, your IRA, retirement, all these other programs that are made up under the fiat currency. They talk about that stuff, but 
not about God's money, the Creator's money, not about real wealth, real big. Pastors are not talking about that, like I said, or church leaders. But beyond that, beyond just the, the money aspect, the God's money, the Creator's money, the nature's money, gold and silver, real use case, to use for barter, trade, that kind of stuff, use as a money. They, I, I, I haven't really talked to, or heard them talk about preparing. Preparing, what, what does that mean? Well, preparing yourself and your family. Um, learn how to grow. I mean, grow in pots if you don't have the room. Learn how to grow a garden. Uh, learn about animals. Learn how to hunt. Learn how to fish, that kind of stuff. Um, learn how to do stuff with your hands. Learn how to do construction or home improvement kind of stuff or mechanic kind of stuff. I, I have never taught, heard them talk about that either. And I think that's a huge thing because of that self-sufficiency that is starting to live on your own um, and away from the need of any government, any help from the booth that's on your head. And I also have not heard them talk about helping the community. Now hold on. Yes, people hear them talk about helping the community from the aspect of we need more funds. We're trying to fundraise to go to this country to help them. We're trying to get some the funds up to help this family or help this town or this um, county or whatever it is. So give to us so we can give to them. Okay, yes, I've heard that and that's fine. But what I really haven't heard is, okay, we're doing this as a church. If you can help, it would be great. But also, you should be doing this same thing on your own. Your family should be doing this kind of stuff on your own without us. Because you can do this, and if you want our help, come knock on the church's door or call us and say, hey, we could use a hand because we are helping these neighbors or we're, help, we're doing this or we're doing this housework on this elderly family's home or this family's home that, you know, they're lost their jobs and they, they, need, they need work on their house, they need work on their vehicles. So we're doing that as community. Go and do that yourself or do that with your, your neighbors. I don't hear churches say that. I hear churches say, give, 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 give to us so we can help these people. Well, we know that goes usually. I'm not, not accusing anything or any church at all. But I just know there's been times of different stories over the years, decades that I've heard, well, whether it's a church or whether it's not, give to us, give to me, and I'll make sure these people are taken care of. But at the same time, taken off the top, taken off the bottom, taken from the middle, and we'll give them what's left. I'm not saying that's happening, but I'm saying it has happened. I'm not saying it has to happen in churches. I'm not saying it hasn't either. I'm just, I'm just throwing stuff out there. I'm just asking questions and saying, hey, maybe this should be paid attention to. So that's all I really had to say. But as always, I want to thank you for watching. If you like this, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And stay vigilant for yourself, your family, the health, and protect your wealth.